yeah, but did anybody else get some Roy Boss tea? Well, that's what we're going to drink today. We are going to make Roy Boss tea. So this tea is native to South Africa. That means that it was first discovered on the continent of Africa. And I do have a globe in the background here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But look at this globe here. And so this tea was first discovered in Africa which is a huge continent. And down at the very tip of Africa is the country of, Af of South Africa. And that's where Roy Boss tea was originally discovered. So it is a tea that's native to Africa. So most of us usually drink, if we drink tea, we usually drink a black tea, but this tea is a little inch, a little different. So we want to try something different. And since we're looking at black history, we want to find out some things about Africa and African history. So let's try rooibos tea. This tea is said to be naturally sweet. So Julian and I are going to make our tea. Come on, Julian. <laughs> Come on, you gotta make your tea. So here are our tea bags, and let's see what we can come up with with Roy Boss. Let's see, is it sweet or is it not naturally sweet? So let me change out the screen here. I don't want this to be the main screen. So. So Jillian, let's make our tea. You wanna? So we have some hot water and we have some cups and Jillian's noticing one thing. What did you notice so far? He's fine. What did you notice so far, Jillian? That the tea cup, the water is yellow. It's, it's yellowish, so that's kind of odd. Look at that. It's really orangey and kind of yellowish. Uh, are y'all able to see the cup? Okay, Julia, you want to hold yours up? Let's try it together, that one. So, cheers. It is supposed to be naturally sweet. So let's see if we like it without any sugar. Does it taste sweet? Just a little, right? It's like water, but a little sugar. It's just a little, it's just, we taste a little sweetness. So it's, it's healthy, so that's good. Anybody gonna try it? Raise your hand if you think you're gonna try some Roy Boss tea, and you can say that you tried a tea from South Africa. So if you don't have it, maybe you can ask mom or dad or grandma or somebody to buy it. I think it's pretty good. So we're also going to add to our Roy Boss tea. Julia, can you go get a cup of, of water, a bottle of water? We're also going to add some fruit, and we're going to make it into a nice cold drink. Okay, so we're going to add some nice fruits hours. And if you want to try to make something for the holidays, or if you have something special, and maybe mom and dad or grandma, maybe the aunts and uncles are doing something special, and you want to make something special, you can try to make Roy Boss tea with fresh fruit. That'll be a nice cold drink. Here, Julian, you want to add mixtures together? Let's mix, mix them together now. So now we have our cup of fruit and we're going to add our tea to it. And let's see how that is. Mm. 
<laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. So we're going to let those sit for a little while and let our fruit mix in with it and see how we like that. It'll be something a little different, a nice fruity tea. Okay, everybody ready for the story? Everybody ready for story time? Okay, let's see. If you wanna say something, I have everybody muted right now, but if you wanna say something, you can go to the chat and you can either raise your hand if you wanna say something or if you just want to raise your hand like this and say something, that's fine too, okay? Okay. So. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. So let's get our tea to We are going to go ahead and bring our artists in and let Daquan, our artist, come in and tell us what he's going to do, what we're going to look at today and share some ideas. Can everyone see Daquan? Can everyone see the artist in the picture? Okay, great. Hey, Daquan. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right, we can hear you. So tell us, okay, so today we are going to read the story of Richard Allen. And Julian has turned the globe around a little bit and uh, we can kind of pinpoint maybe where he was, where he lived. But, um, so let's listen to Daquan. So Daquan, give us some ideas about how, what, how we're going, going to paint this picture today. So I think since it looks like it's such a cool, bright day, we should definitely have some really bright colors. I would love for things to really pop, especially in like the background house. Flat things like this really give us an opportunity to really, you know, go all out with the coloring. That's the best part. Okay, but, I like that idea. Yeah, I, I definitely want to color, but I also want to paint a couple of parts and maybe even use some markers, you know, really have fun. Okay, okay, good. Okay, well, let's do it a little differently this time. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start painting. Um, but I will just give an introduction to the story before we start reading. This is an illustration of Richard Allen. Now, in this picture, you can see that He's in front of a building. Let's go ahead and use our imagination um, and think about what his story might be. Um, let's think about that. What do you think might, based on just what you see, does anybody want to share or? Um, Anybody wanna uh, say what they think might have been going on? Okay, we have a hand up. Okay, I'm it's taking me a little longer. So Daquan, you can go ahead and get started while I'm unmuting everybody and, okay, is that okay? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. I definitely, so right now I've been mixing together the paint so I could create the sky. And in order to do that, I just mix some blue with a lot of white so that I could really be, you know, a nice cheery blue sky, which I really love. But to be honest, we could either start with the sky or we could go with the house. Um, since I'm doing the sky with the paint, I think I'm gonna do that last and start with the house. And in order to paint the house or to color the house, I think I'm gonna go with the yellow color. Okay. Super cheery, you know, this feels the right time for yellow and it's gonna really pop, you know? Okay, that's gonna be really bright. Yes. Okay. So even now, look, it's really coming off. Okay. 
Yellow is definitely one of my favorite colors. I love it. I don't know if I color my house in real life yellow though, but for these purposes, I think it's a really cool idea. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one of my favorite things to do when I'm coloring things like houses is do a nice color that pops in a different way. So since red pops all the same way as yellow pops, but mm -hmm. in a dark way, I think red is a good color to color the roof and all the little trimmings for the house. So oh, next. Nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Margaret, can you help me unmute it? But y'all can uh, go with whatever color y'all want. This is a really fun time to, you know, be very imaginative, very creative. One useful trick I've learned when I'm coloring or even when I'm about to paint is to take a color, maybe a color pencil and trace out what I'm gonna color before I color it in. You know, it really helps to keep things organized. Yes, that's what, um, that's what I used to, that's what we really did when we were children. We used <laughs> to trace everything before we started filling in our color, we traced everything. And interesting because definitely it was my mom who taught me. And also when I go back and paint on top of that, since the the color pencil or the color is a little bit thick, it helps to create like a little ridge for the paint to stay uh, still since it's a different texture too. Okay. And although it does look nice to color in the lines, kids, please don't let that stop you from having a ball on these paint, like the paintings. Do whatever you want. Like, you know, really have fun. This is a really good time to have fun. Don't let that stop you. Mm -hmm. Colors really do pop when they're next to each other. Yes, they, re they really do. Sometimes we like to say they vibrate when colors do that. Okay. Okay, they vibrate. I like that. What are some of you guys are working on? Can you guys hold your pictures up and? Whoa. Oh, nice. That is nice and bright. I love it. Oh. Julian, you want to get started on yours? Teresa, you want one? Thank you, Brady. Nice work, everybody. I love it. Yes. You all are such good colorers. Wow. <laughs> Almost better than me. Wow. <laughs> Can you unmute them? You know, a bright house like this kind of reminds me of some of the houses in New Orleans. Yes, where where we tend to have a lot of color in our yeah. architecture. Absolutely. I'm in the audio right here. 
Okay, so far we use red and yellow. Is that anyone's favorite color? Red or yellow? That's your favorite color? Whoa, which one? Yellow or red? Wow, great. Red. Red? Yeah. Personally, my favorite color is blue, but red and yellow are two really mm -hmm. good colors. That's my favorite color too, blue. I love all the different shades of blue. Navy, the sky yeah. blue, they're all such peaceful, calm colors. I love them. I love them. Very cozy, all of them. I'm going to put the brushes over this way so Ms. Teresa can have some too. I didn't get to get any of that tea, but I did get some, you know. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and we just made our tea, Roy Boss. And now I'm going to move on to coloring the sky with paint. Oh, okay. Don't dip it all the way into it. You just, you only have to touch the, again, the tip of your brush. Okay, so the only thing we really have to worry about, of course, is avoiding the clouds because we want to keep them white. So sometimes okay. it even helps to go close to the cloud and kind of outline it so that once again you have a border like you did with the colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. That way you just know what to watch out for. And then you can handle the bigger sections by themselves. And to be honest, I feel like that blue might be a little too dark, but the good thing about okay. painting is all you have to do is add a little bit more paint. Uh -huh. <laughs> White. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. It's a pretty day outside, so my goal is to try to make it look as pretty as it is today. Yes, it is. It is beautiful. I'm so excited to see how rich and green all the grass is starting to get and how the birds are starting to really chirp a little bit differently. Spring is such a fun time. Mm-hmm. Does anybody else have a dog in the background crying like ours? He <laughs> wants to paint too. <laughs> no. I didn't originally 
create this cool piece of art. But I do like what the artists did when they made the um, the figure and the house because they have a lot of interesting lines that kind of meet the corner of the paper and that oh. creates well interest. Yeah. Okay, It'll nice. Okay. Oh, I love the way that sky is coming out. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Can I see everyone's pictures again? I'd love to see what parts y'all are all on. Oh, nice. Look at oh. that. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and start reading the story. So while you all are coloring, we're going to listen to the story. This is the story of Richard Allen. This is his quote. Richard Allen said, this land which we have watered with our tears and our blood is now our mother country and we are well satisfied to stay where wisdom abounds and the gospel is free. Richard Allen was born into slavery in 1760. He was separated from his mother and some of his siblings when his slaveholder sold them and they were forced to move to another plantation. Richard's slaveholder encouraged the enslaved to attend the church services of Reverend Freeborn Garrison, a Methodist preacher who visited. Reverend Garrison spoke about the evils of slavery and asked slaveholders to consider freeing their enslaved workers. Richard was moved by what he heard and he became a preacher. This caused the slaveholders to become angry. Richard's slaveholder also heard the message of the visiting preacher and was moved to allow his enslaved workers the opportunity to buy their freedom. Can you imagine that a person might have to buy their very own freedom. Enslaved people usually worked from Monday through Saturday. Some slaveholders allowed their enslaved workers to perform contract work on Sunday to earn money that they could keep. Richard accepted the slaveholders offer and purchased his freedom from slavery in 1718 for $2,000. After he became a preacher, he studied the Bible diligently. In 1784, he attended a conference of the Methodist Church and became a qualified preacher. However, he was not allowed to vote at one of the church's business meetings because he was African-American. Allen moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're gonna stop and find that on the map since we were looking at the map. So let's see, let's see if we can find Philadelphia. Julian, can you come in and move the map around? Okay, that's the United States, right? So Philadelphia, no, go back to where you were. That's the United States, yes. Now go over to this area right here. 
Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is on the east coast of the United States, somewhere right along this area. Okay, it's, it's considered the east coast. It's a, one of the larger cities in the United States. And Philadelphia was actually the original capital of the United States. Right now, our capital is Washington, D.C. But at one time, perhaps at this time, Philadelphia was the capital. Beautiful, beautiful job. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Beautiful work. Okay, let's get back to our story. Allen moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where many of the Blacks lived in freedom. He became a preacher at St. George's Episcopal Methodist Church in 1786. He was asked to lead the 5 a.m. service, which was mainly attended by Blacks. More and more Blacks began to attend the early morning service that was led by Allen, and the leaders of the church asked Allen to hold his service in a separate area of the building. He could not hold his service in the church area any longer. Allen was not happy that Blacks had to pray and worship separately from whites. He and another African-American preacher, Absalom Jones, and the Black members left St. George's in 1787 and purchased land to build a church where African-Americans would be allowed to worship and pray in the main sections of the church building, just like everybody else. New members joined the church, and in 1794, they identified themselves as an African Methodist Episcopal congregation, and their church was called Bethel African Methodist Episcopal. Allen and his wife, Sarah, operated a station in the Underground Railroad at the church from 1797 until he died in 1831. Runaway enslaved people found refuge and comfort in the church's basement on their route to freedom. So those very pictures that you're painting represent a place where enslaved people could run away and hide as they were making their way across the country to find a place where they could live free. In 1861, Allen united with five African-American congregations of the Methodist Church. Together, they founded the first fully independent Black denomination in the United States, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, R A M E. Later, Allen became the organization's bishop. Richard Allen taught himself to read and write as a child, and he knew firsthand the power of education. Since many African Americans could not attend public schools in their community, he opened schools to educate them. An idea that grew popular during Allen's time was to establish colonies in Africa where African Americans could relocate to live without racial troubles that they had in the United States. Allen was firm in his belief that African Americans had made great contributions to the United States, and this was their homeland. Bishop Allen's work and, and dedication led to the formation of the oldest and the largest 
formal institution in Black America, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Wow, isn't that something? Did you all hear that story? How Richard Allen, he changed his life and then he changed the world. He helped enslave people to find a place, to make their way across the country by visiting, by stopping off and getting food and shelter and water, maybe money in places like that yellow building that you all are painting. Isn't that awesome? Wow, oh, look at that. That is beautiful. I love the purple and the blue together. Okay, I'm kind of disappointed. I'm not getting to paint mine. I'm gonna have to paint mine a little later. <laughs> yeah, this has been really fun. Yeah. What about the house in the back? What color are y'all going to paint that one? The little house on the side of him. Yeah. Does anyone want to pick? Ooh, pink. Pink, OK. Yeah, that's going to be <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> I'm telling you. I definitely think purple was a good color for him because yeah. ooh, how about pink with like a black trimming since someone said it black? Yeah, that, that, that would definitely pop, make it pop, right? <laughs> and for him, you know, purple is such a royal color, so it only makes sense. Yes, yes. Why did you paint this? You only have to dip at the very tip of your paintbrush. You don't have to put your paintbrush into the bottom of your paint, okay? Once again, since, like I said before, this painting really invites you to travel, you start picking out little shapes like the circle, like the triangle, and it gets yes. you to move across the space. Since we're doing that, or it's already happening with the shapes. Whoa, that one's so cool. Nice, Yours is beautiful. I <laughs> Continued that idea with the color, and since this color is red, we could keep it traveling and make his tie red. So you know the color travels around the picture. And the same paint I used for that just now, that red, I'm gonna go ahead and mix it with a little bit of white so that we could get that cool pink house. That was a perfect idea. The pink, especially next to that purple, is such a, a spring come. Oh, yes, I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you can wash your hands. Our painting is getting a little messy over here. <laughs> Sometimes that's the fun part, though. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs>
Paint the gate, maybe. Does anyone have suggestions on the gate? Okay, you want to put it in a chat? Yeah. Blue. blue. Well, we the sky is blue. Do we want to go with blue again? Um, uh, uh, hmm. Red and yellow. Red and yellow. Well, that'll be the same color as the... <laughs> we have one vote for red and yellow, which means the house and the sky and the uh, gate would be the same color. How about we, uh, if we just do it in a black, a black trim or brown. Okay, what are we left with? What, do, what else do we have? What Our, color? Purple is what? cool. Our, we could do brown like a wooden fence. Oh, I think that would be nice. Let's go with a wooden, a wooden fence. Or even if we, well, I was thinking, okay, you know how in New Orleans we have the wrought iron fence oh, and yeah. those are black. Mm -hmm. How about that? How about we try a black? That could be cool, especially yeah. because a thing that black does when you introduce it into a picture is it either pushes something back or pulls it forward. Oh, so okay. Definitely going to help the house sit behind him and sit behind everything. Is okay. Once with the okay. depth. So that's okay, a pretty let's see, let's see how that works. Hmm. You finish everything? Blue shirt, red tie, purple jacket. And you can see through the fence, one trick we could do after. Or even before you color the fence, since we're using black now that we've uh, decided, you could just color right through it with the yellow and then go back over it and cover it with the black fence. So oh, it looks okay. like. Yeah. So okay. Go back over the yellow first, actually. On the okay. Side. That'll probably be way easier than going into the middle. Because if you already started, you could go right in the middle and like do the. Okay. Yellow. Like that. Hmm? Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, somebody colored their windows wow. different colors. Is that different colors on your windows? See. Yeah, somebody got creative. I like that. <laughs> I like that. And that's the beautiful thing about art. We don't have to necessarily paint everything, the colors that we see. Yeah. Sometimes somebody will paint a face and the face is blue or the face is green. And we know that their face doesn't really look like that, but that's your artistic creativity and your artistic expression. And when you're doing art, you're free to do that. Yeah. And you know what? That was the perfect time to talk about faces because for the big finale, the last thing we're doing is the face. Yes. And for the face, I thought since we've already done colors and paint, we could move on to the markers. Okay. So when making a face, it's usually a good idea to think about the highlights first. And the highlights of your face are the things that capture the light most. So it's the things that kind of stick out, which is your nose, the top, like the middle of your forehead, over your eyebrows, by your cheeks, and sometimes your chin. Um, so when we paint or when we color a face, sometimes that's what we like to think about. <clears throat> and the cool thing about this picture is it already comes with the shadows. So we know what the darks are going to be. We just have to figure out where the lights are going to be and then go from there. 
So if you're coloring, I would make the highlight parts the lightest parts that you color. But I'm gonna use these markers. So I'm gonna make sure I think about the nose, like I said, the forehead too, and the cheeks, the tops of the cheeks. So now that those parts are kind of sectioned off, we could get to coloring. And oh. the highlights first is because sometimes when you color and you go over the colors or the places you color a little bit more, it starts to get darker. So if you do the light parts first and then work outward, it's way more manageable. Okay. One of my favorite things about coloring or drawing faces is to look at the different features like the noses and the lips and the eyes and think to myself, do I know anyone who has a nose that kind of looks like this? Or do I know anyone whose eyes are the same color as these? Because, oh. it, you know, to get interested in um, what, you're, what you're creating, you know, to start mm -hmm. to think about the personality traits this person could have and what they remind you of. Okay, so when when you see him, uh, does anybody have any thoughts based upon the story that we read about Richard Allen? Does anybody have any thoughts about him that we could try to uh, portray in his picture? What do you guys think about Richard Allen based upon the story that we read about him? Well, I think that he is a compassionate man because he did something to help to make the congregation everybody in the congregation feel accepted and feel free to worship God. I agree. He does look very compassionate, especially because his eyes look so kind and soft. But what I also appreciate is how stern his brows look because you know he means business and he's really passionate, right. passionate about right. it. And the same concept we use when we uh, kind of outline certain parts that we were going to color, you could use that with the face too, especially the little creases, because that's where the shadows are going to lie in your face. So, okay. and when I work on a person's face, like I said, I kind of outline where the highlights are going to go, and then okay. I slow inward, mm -hmm. slowly move inward. Okay, okay. Because you want, especially since it's a person's face for the colors to like transition naturally. Mm -hmm. The mouth is a place where there could be highlights too. So remember that, whoa, yours has really come together. Wow. Can I see everybody? We got some, we got some talent here. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. Yes, nice. I love these. These are amazing.
Okay, now I'm going to go in with the darker marker, <laughs> darker marker to really get in all the shadows. And I'm not gonna go too oh. great. Just okay, gonna... so that's how you get to your highlights. Right, it, they really pop when you do the darker parts too, you know? Okay, yeah. I think it's a good tool, especially if you start with a lighter paper or usually a white paper to just let that be your highlight and kind of work around it and it let, let it eventually build up by itself, you know? Okay. The darker, uh, the part of the face that's usually not showing or like turned away from the picture plane is usually going to be the part with the most highlight. And when you add, I mean, the most shadow and when you add that shadow to that side, once again, makes that person pop out a little bit more. Same concept for when they had the dark that kind of pushes things back. Uh -huh. this, this is here. The rest of all of this kind of stands in front of it and really pushes them out. <laughs> you little fellow. You didn't drink it. I thought you didn't want it. I'm enjoying my Roy Boss tea. And with that, I think we're just about done. Yes, beautiful. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Oh, look at that. I love that rich skin tone that you picked. Mm -hmm. Beautiful too. job. All right. It is four o'clock. I thank you all for coming. I hope that everybody enjoyed themselves and had fun. Um, we did get to do our Black history drama, but thank you, Essence. We did get to do our Black history drama, so only because I didn't, I don't know how to unmute. I'm so sorry, but next time I will unmute. Julian, come on, let's do some Black history drama based on this story. What do you remember about this story? What's one thing that you remember? I remember that the Underground Railroad until he died. That's right. So can we do, we're going to do some drama you be Richard, you be Richard Allen, and I'm gonna be someone who's coming to your church to hide out. Okay. So here I am. I'm I've just made it to the I've just made it to this yellow building. Mr. A Bishop Allen. Yes. Bishop, Bishop Allen. I'm hiding out. Can you give me safe passage here? Of course I will. Thank you, Mr. Allen. I'm forever grateful to you. Thank God for you. It is my honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come That's our Black History drama. Family, you can get together and you can make your own drama based on what you learned today. Thanks, everybody. I enjoyed y'all. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>